I've tried and tested my Ultra Lone Peak 4.0 trail running shoes over the last six months. They've been on hundreds of miles of hiking with me. They've been up Snowden, Ben Nevis, they've been up Scarfell Pike in the Lake District, uh, they've been up Penny Fan and so many more places. Uh, so it's about time I gave you my honest review. Let's go. Hello fellow hiker and long-term world traveller, Russ here bringing you the best tips and inspiration for hiking around the world. In this video I'm going to be going over some of the specs and the features as well as the wear and tear after six months of wearing these. Also I'll be going over some of the things that I really liked and the things that I didn't like so much. Okay so these are the Ultra Lone Peak 4.0 trail runners in a low top design in a mesh upper. They also come in a low waterproof and a mid waterproof version as well. These were given to me at the start of the year and man have I really tested these things. I've also taken these on so many different trips in all types of conditions in really snowy conditions as well as really hot and dry rocky surfaces as well so that's what they are and how much I've used them let's go over some of the specs these will set you back about 120 pounds if you go direct from the ultra website uh, but if you go onto Amazon I found them at about 100 to 200 pounds varying in that range of price depending on the size of shoe that you want as well as the uh, the color that you want as well. I will put a link in the description below to these shoes on Amazon where I found them at the best price that I can. They also have a women's version of these shoes in different colors and in smaller sizes. They weigh in at just 241 grams and they have a zero drop which is supposed to be a lot better for push off and foot form. They have a really good 25 millimeter thick sole so if you're on those rocky pebbly trails I, in my own experience, it's very hard to feel those rocks and those pebbles under your feet. Whereas if you're wearing something much lighter, like a running shoe which is designed for flat ground, uh, you're going to feel those pebbles a lot more. So these are very, very comfortable. A lot of people have spoken to me in my comments section and said that it's literally like walking on a cloud. I don't know how literal that is, but they're very comfortable shoes to wear. Now we've gone over some of the specs, let's talk about some of the features. There's a lot of really cool features on these trail runners, even though they're still very minimal. They're made of a very durable mesh upper, which is this bit here. Uh, and the benefits of having a mesh upper is that they're incredibly breathable and they're gonna dry very fast so your feet aren't gonna sweat as much as well and this also adds to the comfort factor of these shoes too. They have a really incredible grip on them which they actually call trail claws. The lugs on these, when you first get them, very sharp and even still after putting these through so many miles, they're very good on grass, slippery rocks. They shouldn't really be considered a snowshoe but I've worn these in the snow and they do stop you from slipping quite a bit as well in the snow. The lugs are really uniquely positioned as well, so I've been walking in snow or on mud, and if I track back on myself, I can actually tell which shoes are mine. Not many people here in the UK own these, but a lot of folks that do the long distance trails out in the US, apparently these are a very popular shoe to wear for that. A really cool feature that I like about these is that it has four gator track points, which are two on the side, one on the front with this little hook and then one on the back with this kind of little strap of velcro which is really tough. There aren't many trail running shoes out there that I've seen that have four ways to attach a pair of gaiters to. So these are really good if you're going to be walking in dry and dusty conditions where gaiters are almost essential. They've got quite a big heel loop on the back for hanging up and carrying. They've got drainage holes in the sole so if they get really wet uh, again they're going to dry really fast. But one of the best features of these shoes is they have an ultra wide toe box so it's going to stop your toes rubbing together and give you a much more natural placement of your feet within the shoe. Because of this, I've actually never, ever, ever got a blister whilst wearing these. I've been, I think the longest height that I've done is about 25 miles uh, consecutively in one hit with these. And uh, I've, yeah, never got a blister. The most comfortable shoes I've ever worn. I'm literally not just saying that. I'm so glad that I got these. Uh, and they really have done me so, so well. Obviously, these shoes might not be for everybody. I have really wide, really flat feet. So they're just the perfect size and the perfect fit. One good piece of advice about these that I will give you is that compared to the New Balance shoes that I've worn, New Balance actually put all of their sports shoes or their like running related shoes a size up. And I have no idea why. I don't know why they don't just change the labels down. Uh, but these are just the normal size usually for New Balance I go in a 9 but for these I went in an 8 I actually tested out a size 9 uh, in these shoes and they were far too big for me so the 8 was a really good fit so yeah just go your normal size with these and you should be fine now I've had these for six months they've been on hundreds of miles of hiking with me as I said in all types of conditions so let's talk about some of the wear and tear as you can see these are starting to sag quite a bit they're not like a boot a boot will definitely last a lot longer than these, but already these are kind of caving in on the front a little bit. I mean, they are made out of a mesh uh, fabric on the upper, so that's kind of expected, but when you get these, these look a lot more plush. 
uh, but I always like to test my gear before I show you, so hence why these look a lot older than a brand new pair. The lugs on the bottom are starting to get quite worn out. Uh, a couple of them on the side actually are starting to kind of split and break off on the sides. Uh, I don't know if you can see that there, but yeah, I think that's just kind of like general wear and tear, and that's expected after six months of really rigorous use. Another piece of wear and tear which is happening mainly on the left foot is that the, uh, the, the front kind of lip of rubber that's on the front of the shoe near the toes uh, is actually starting to come loose. Um, I've seen a couple of other pairs of these on other people where this is starting to happen. Again, this is going to be expected after six months. You can definitely see some scuff marks on the front where I've been like kicking these about and smacking my feet into rocks, but because there's so much room in the toe box and they're so well fitted, even if you smack this into a rock, my toes don't actually touch the front of the toe box, so I don't actually end up smacking my toes into the rock that I hit with my foot. So. Uh, yeah, another comfort factor. Again, all of this is totally expected. I've been on some seriously sharp rocks, really gravelly trails in the snow and the ice, uh, and these have held up really well after six months. I'm not complaining, these are just superficial things. Okay, so now we've talked about some of the specs, the features, and the wear and tear, let's talk about some of the things that I really liked about the Ultra Lone Peak 4.0s. I really like how quickly these things drain out. While I was up in Snowdonia a couple of weeks ago, I was walking through bogs and puddles, and it was really chucking it down with rain. And uh, when it stopped raining, I was walking, and after a couple of hours, they actually really started to dry out quite well. So if you're wearing these with like a thin sports sock in the summer, expect these to hold up really well in the wet and they'll make sure that your feet dry really quickly and even though these have a lot more cushioning than like my New Balance Minimus or something similar like that it didn't really affect the drying time of them especially if you're wearing them whilst they're drying. These were definitely designed for those trails where you're going to expect to get your feet wet. Secondly the grip on these is absolutely insane they're almost like a really grippy boot but with less of the weight, less of the materials, and less of the blisters. These held up incredibly well on wet grass and rocks and things like that, pebbly trails, but I definitely wouldn't recommend these if you know you're going to be walking in the snow. The only time I've worn these in the snow is when it was a very unexpected snowfall up in the Lake District a couple of months ago. But even then, they still stop me from slipping around quite a bit. I would recommend in the snow that you definitely look into wearing boots with crampons though. Thirdly, I really like this kind of little lip that's on the back on the outer sole because when you kind of put your foot down and heel down as you're walking like that, or if you're walking downhill, that gives you a really good little bit of cushion as well. So it stops you kind of smacking your heel and smacking your knees in while you're going downhill. So that was a really nice little design feature that they've added onto this trail runner. Finally, these are incredibly comfy. That toe box that I mentioned earlier really helps with the blisters. They're like wearing a pair of your Sunday slippers. Uh, my Merrill Moabs were probably the closest in terms of comfortable uh, feel while I was wearing them, and these are just way more comfortable with them as well. Uh, really pleased with these, and I'll definitely be buying more and more of these as and when they kind of run out of their grip and their durability and they start to break up. I wouldn't recommend actually waiting until they break up because uh, you could actually do your feet some damage, but. Um, yeah, a uh, really good one, and I'm definitely going to be buying more in the future. Okay, so now that's some of the things that I really liked about the Ultra Lone Peak 4.0s, let's go over some of the things that I didn't like so much. Okay, so first off is the price at £120 when you go direct at the Ultra website. They're not a cheap shoe, but I've bought cheap shoes in the past. They've held up really well. The cheapest shoes that I've ever bought are the Merrill Moabs that I mentioned just a minute ago. Uh, and these were way more comfortable, way more grippy, they dried much faster. You, you are getting a much better shoe for twice the price, but yeah, it is a bit of a high price point just for a pair of footwear. Secondly, because these are well cushioned on the sole, I did find that my feet, if I was going over rocks, would kind of slip and slide over the sole, whilst in this you can see this kind of bit of fabric uh, kind of going over the sole to the left a little bit. And uh, yeah, my feet would just kind of slip over a little bit. Maybe I just needed them a little bit tighter, but because my feet are so wide, I don't like having these too tight. I want my feet to breathe and I want to be comfortable, but that's just a little thing. Apart from that, that's pretty much it. I mean, I can't really think about anything else. If I do, I'll let you know, but um, after wearing these for so long, 
just so few things that I dislike. I will be actually looking into buying more different types of shoes from Ultra because it seems like they know what they're doing when it comes to trail running shoes, anything for long distance hiking, uh, but I'll definitely be wearing these on the PCT next year. Okay folks, campfire question, what trail running shoes do you own and why? Let the Trail Hunter community know in the comments section below, we would absolutely love to hear from you. Thanks very much for watching this video, thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it, and I'll see you in the next one.